We've all been there. You were planning on cleaning out your stuffed closet, but ended up getting sidetracked and just started looking at all the old stuff of yours you found inside. Old birthday cards, old toys, old clothes, old yearbooks, and old video games. And as you're looking, you find that old video game. The one you most distinctly remember from your childhood. The one that brought you the most joy. A wave of nostalgia washes over you as you read the back panel and the game's manual and inspect the disc inside. And you have your doubts as to whether or not this game would still work if you were to put it into its old console, but you plug that console in, place the dusty and scratched disc inside, and close it up anyway, hoping deep down that the game still runs. And as you tightly grip that clunky and definitely not ergonomically designed controller in your hands, a familiar startup sound chimes. You can't believe it. You are elated that it still runs just the same as it did 10, 15, 20 years ago. And you sit in your room, playing it for hours, revisiting those old memories that you never thought you'd get to relive. At least, that's how I felt when I searched my closet and found I Ninja. I Ninja is a 3D action adventure platformer developed by Argonaut Games, published by Namco, and released on September 9th, 2003. Now, I Ninja is a game that kind of flew under the radar, but if you ask me, it didn't deserve to. In I Ninja, you play as a ninja named Ninja, and you have a sensei named Sensei. I'm serious, there's also a villain. Can you guess his name? No, it's not villain, you sound like an idiot. It's Emperor Odor. Odor is an alien, and he has an army of evil ninjas called Ranks. In the opening cutscene of the game, Wait, are they T-posing? In the opening cutscene of the game, Ninja rescues Sensei from the hands of a few ranks. After freeing Sensei from the chains, a dragon monster thing pops out of the ground, a ninja runs over there, slaps it around a bit, jumps on its back, and brutally stabs his katana into its neck so that it barfs up a red spiky icosahedron. Ninja then grabs it. No! Stay back! causing him to go crazy, lose control, and fly directly into Sensei. Oh, I wonder what happened to Sensei, that was kind of funny. Yep, Ninja killed him. But Sensei, somehow still being miraculously patient with this little nuge, calmly explains to Ninja what had happened and what must happen next. What have I done? Master, you're dead. Your grasp of the obvious astounded. It wasn't my fault. What was that thing? That was a rage stone, an ancient object of great power. There are more. More? And you must retrieve them. More? Yes. The first lies on Robot Beach. It is guarded by the one known as... Kaiser. Kaiser? What kind of name is Kaiser? I hope there is enough time to teach you the lessons you will need to defeat the protectors of the stones. Ah, he's dead and still all he can think about is my training. Wow. What a little piece of shit. And then you find yourself in the first level hub, Robot Beach. Ninja, listen up. Complete a mission for me and I will give you a grade. With grades, you will earn belts to show your mastery of the ninja way. That huge robot lying on the beach is Tekeyama. He was the governor of this region before the invasion by Odor's ranks army. Behind each of the doors on this beach, you will find a mission. He also gives you some, uh, encouraging words. Go now, and remember, a stitch in time is worth two in the bush. Fun fact, this actually becomes a running gag throughout the game. 
like sensei can just never ever get his adages right like he's perpetually suffering from dementia or something it's kind of dark and depressing really and with that the game begins you're assigned your first mission called i ninja very funny and you continue to traverse the other levels in robot beach getting tekeyama's right eye left eye and heart so that you can repair him, start him up, and use him to beat Robot Beach's boss, Kaiza, in an intense boxing match that takes place in the middle of the ocean. Why the middle of the ocean? Why not the middle of the ocean? Once you defeat Kaiza, you unlock the next Rage Stone ability and the second level hub, where Odor creates all his weaponry, Bombay. This? Odor is more powerful than I could have ever imagined. He is building all his weaponry here in this bay. You have to sabotage his operations before it's too late. Recall that time and tide make Jack a uh, dull boy. And that's supposed to help me how? And it's a similar story throughout the rest of the game. You play that level hub's missions to collect grades, leveling up your belt and sword along the way, until you have the required belt color to go up against that level hub's boss. And when you beat that boss, you get a new Rage Stone ability and unlock the next level hub. Okay, it's here that I want to briefly pivot and take a moment to appreciate something else about this game. And that's the area of all media, not just video games, that often goes unnoticed, despite being incredibly integral to the final product. The music. Composed by Nick Arundel, Mark Bandola, and Rob Lord, almost every level in iNinja has its own track, and the composers did something pretty cool with each of those tracks. In virtually every single song, there is a leitmotif, and a leitmotif is a recurring melody or tune. Once you identify what the game's leitmotif is, you will always hear it in every track, and you won't be able to unhear it. And as you heard, it doesn't always sound the same. The composers change the speed, the pitch, use different instruments and styles, and sometimes even throw in a few extra notes that weren't there previously. But it always stays recognizable. However, the game's leitmotif is just a bonus point, because the game's music on its own, to put it plain and simply, is really good. The composers did a fantastic job fitting the tracks to the environments, like when you're in Bombay. And the music, while being far from the stereotypical water level style, still somehow sounds like what a bay with a wooden ship at sunset would sound like. If you've heard that before. Wait, was that the light motif? Anyway, Bombay has some of the most creative and unique levels in the whole game, but three really stand out. One of which is called Chase the Fuse, where Ninja has to chase a fuse that's been lit and get to the grade before the fuse reaches a bunch of bombs that will destroy Bombay. Another is Grade in a Cage, where Ninja has to jump on and ride an explosive barrel to the grade because it's encaged, and the cage can only be broken into by setting off the explosive barrel. This mission requires a lot of precision, because if you accidentally fall off from high enough areas, the barrel will explode and you'll have to restart from the beginning of the level. And the third is Rocket Factory, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You traverse this huge, multi-layered factory, where each section of the factory serves as a different stage in the development of the rockets, until, in the final stage, they're tested by being fired at a target, which you exploit to reach the grade. Rocket Factory also has one of my personal favorite tracks in the entire game. It really fits the giant warehouse factory setting.
Once you level up to a green belt, you're then able to take on Bombay's boss, Ventus, a weird machine anglerfish hybrid. Because you have to fight him in the water, Ninja has to maneuver a mini submarine that fires torpedoes. Ventus also likes to try to eat you, by the way. This level takes quite a long time to complete, and it's one of the more frustrating ones. You aren't able to hold down the firing button on the controller, so you have to press it every single time you want to shoot. And that's a lot of times. But in another Bombay level called Shoot the Ships, where you stand at a cannon and shoot a bunch of ships, you are able to hold down the firing button rather than press it every time you want to shoot. So needless to say, once you defeat Ventus, your thumb is sore. After killing Ventus, you unlock the third level hub, Jungle Falls, a lush and secluded forested area with a waterfall and a background track with a quite catchy baseline. Shh, listen. Can you smell that? That's the smell of fear, as thousands of tortured souls cry out for freedom. There is a gateway to the underworld around here somewhere. I bet my beard on it. Go investigate. And don't forget, a rolling stone wasn't built in a day. It's all crystal now. Yeah, there was me thinking you were an idiot. In case you couldn't tell already, yes, Billy West does voice Ninja. But even crazier is the voice of Sensei, none other than D. Bradley Baker, one of the most prolific voice actors in history. In fact, the most. According to BehindTheVoiceActors.com, he has voiced a total of, Jesus, 2,449 individual roles, which is miles ahead of even number two, Tom Kenny. D. Bradley Baker has voiced Bubble Bass, Perry the Platypus, and Squilliam Fancy Son III. Like, these are all the same guy. How cool is that? Jungle Falls has some pretty cool levels, including one where you get to jump on logs floating down a river. Just make sure you don't go in the direction of the logs. Oh wow, oh my god. And another called Sly Ninja, which is a standard stealth mission interspersed with some risky, difficult platforming. It's a stealth mission because of these things here called Sentinels. They are completely indestructible, mechanized security droids that are operated by a single ranks inside. These Sentinels constantly shoot out red teleorb rays that if you get caught in, send you back to the last checkpoint. So to get past them, you have to shoot your darts and shurikens at them to get them to spin around, allowing you to quickly run around them when they're not looking. There's another mission, Buzz Off, where these insects called sap suckers drain the sap from the trees of the jungle. And apparently this sap is like sacred or something, so that's cool. The ranks also use it to keep the portal to the underworld open for the boss in Jungle Falls. Speaking of the devil, literally, the boss in Jungle Falls is Siamon, a demon from the underworld whose mouth is a portal to the underworld who is obsessed with showing you his pearly white teeth, wow. Now, Ninja is short. Like, you can't ride this ride short. So you have to fight Siamon in this robot mini mecha with two Gatling gun style rotary cannons called The Enforcer MK2. Why, thank you, random disembodied female voice, for finishing my sentence. Those ranks look like they could do with a hot lead injection. Try it now. Power bolts. Filling your enemies with lead charges up your dual power bolt blasters. When full, unleash your power bolts. Loading. We hope you enjoy causing many days of pain and suffering to your enemies. Aww. You have to spend a good, like, seven minutes battling the Wraith ranks that come out of Simon's mouth, which are the spawn of Satan. Oh my god, they just keep on coming. Possibly literally. Eventually, Simon takes one too many power bolts to the face and sinks back down into the underworld portal he came from. Before giving you your reward. Killing Simon unlocks the fourth level hub, Mountain Gorge, a treacherous, mountainous ravine with faint lightning beyond the mountaintops and serene, tranquil music. Oh. 
you scared of heights? Ahem. <clears throat> uh, me neither. The clouds, Ninja. He's taking all of the clouds. Odor is truly a powerful adversary if he can control the clouds. This treacherous mountain gorge is all that stands between us and Odor himself. So from here, it's victory or certain death. Go get him! And as my master told me, a friend in need is good for the gander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As my grandmother once said to me, <laughs> she was mad too. Mountain Gorge is by far the largest level hub in the whole game. It's also the only one you can die in. Mountain Gorge is home to three different levels. Sneak and Destroy, which is another stealth mission where Ninja has to evade the Sentinels and get to the grade undetected. Clouding Around, where Ninja has to jump on these floating boxes called Cloud Crates in order to cross the void beneath him and get to the grade. And Crystal Cavern, where Ninja has to use explosive darts to destroy a massive crystal hanging above the mission that holds the grade. This is also the longest freaking level in the entire game. Once you play enough of these missions, you earn enough grades to level up to a red belt, which then lets you fight Mountain Gorge's boss. The boss is Odor's right-hand man, Malachi. Yes, he's a wizard, how did you know? Malachi attacks using the elements, like lava and lightning. The battle starts with Ninja standing on ascending and descending rock pillars in a sea of lava, having to jump from one to another in order to dodge Malachi's attacks of lightning orbs and rays. All the while, Ninja collects shurikens and throws them at Malachi until enough damage has been dealt for him to suck all that lava back into his wizardly crutch. After that, you face off against him in actual hand-to-hand -hand combat, as he blasts you with more lightning orbs, uh, expanding ground lightning circles, and even his magical cudgel itself. <laughs> oh, and all while teleporting from directly in front of you to literally anywhere else. And you continue this tango until finally... The grade then drains the life force from Malachi's body because, okay, and you unlock the next level hub. Except you don't get another rage stone, you already have all four. Instead, you free Zarla, the previous guardian of Mountain Gorge, who was imprisoned by Malachi when the ranks invaded. She explains to Ninja what Rage Stone you'd get, as well as its power, by killing Odor. Beware of Odor. He has the most powerful stone of all. It has the ability to bring people back from the dead. <laughs> Sensei would like to hear that. <laughs> what would it do to the living? It makes them immortal. Mm, that could come in handy too. Well, that's just great. So now Ninja is literally debating in his head whether or not he should revive Sensei with the Stone of Life, you know, after killing him because of his own stupidity, or take it for himself to become immortal. Nice. Anyway, let's just brush that under the rug for a minute. After beating Malachi, you make it to the fifth and final level hub, Moonbase, which also has a teleportation pad that takes you to the space station, the second part of the Moonbase. Face, the spinal frontier. Hmm, no, that doesn't sound right. Space, the civil engineer. Oh, getting old. Anyway, I got the launcher working. Fancy some space station action? Once at the space station, with the requirement of a black belt, you can finally, after everything we just went through, face off against Odor himself. Right, here's the battle plan. Step one, don't die. Step three, what happened to step two? Step two, ah, here it is. Good luck, don't lose your head. Too easy. So you are the ninja who killed his own master and stole the rage stones. I have been expecting you. <clears throat> yep. The entire game was an elaborate fart joke. Odor, odor, ranks, rank. Yep. That's the game. After a stupidly difficult and long boss fight... Wait, sorry, that was a note next to the Malachi one. 
Let me retry that. After a laughably easy and predictable boss fight, you come to realize that, wait, that was it? And the developers realized this too, so they decided that you didn't actually beat Odor. Don't be confused by this health bar, it's just for show. And you have to face him a second time to make up for how incredibly easy he is. You know, it's really cool how the game developers included such a universally loved boss fight trope by everyone's account. So Ninja follows Odor into space, does some zero-g platforming, and battles him a second time. You know, we're actually really fortunate for the game developers going this route with the boss fight. I mean, I can almost get four whole hits on him before he knocks me back 40 feet. I have never felt so privileged. Eventually. Ninja lands the final blow on Odor, actually defeating him once and for all and triggering the final cutscene, where Ninja must come to an uncomfortable decision. Either give Sensei the Stone of Life and make up for accidentally killing him, or take it for himself and live forever. Ninja! It is done, my master. I have proven myself. Where is the stone of life? Must you always focus on what you do not have? Remember, a glass that is half empty is also half full. It sure would be nice to have that glass you keep talking about half full of the stone of life. You still have much to learn, my young student. There it is. My key to immortality! No one deserves this more than me! Ah, and you showed such potential. Actions speak louder? As you once told me, Master, actions speak louder than words! Ooh, oh. ah, ah, thank you. It is a great thing that yeah. you... Cut the chit-chat, Gramps! Ninja makes the right choice by reviving Sensei and absolving himself for what he had done. But that's not how the game ends. There's still about 30 more seconds to that cutscene. It is a great thing that yeah. you- Yeah, for the chit chat, Gramps. With time, you will learn to- More lessons? You know, journeys like this usually lead to mastery. Ah, patience is a virtue. Great, more pearls of wisdom. At least if I had taken the stone, I would have had eternal peace and quiet from your philosophical ramblings. No, I would have haunted you. It ends on a cliffhanger, which wouldn't be so bad if the company that developed it, Argonaut Games, didn't go bankrupt a year after making it, but they did. And they were going to make a sequel. You can even find concept art online of what some of the enemies, weapons, levels, and environments were gonna look like in iNinja 2. And a little more than a year ago, there was an official iNinja 2 opening scene that had been uncovered from the depths of the internet on Vimeo. It was actually posted by one of the artists who worked on the first game, but that's as far as the development team made it. And now, really soon, the game is turning 20 years old. And we still have no remaster, no sequel, no fan-made sequel, not even a port to the new consoles. Nothing. It's just as forgotten as it was the day it came out. Like I said, iNinja is an extremely underrated game, but almost everyone who has actually played it, critics and players alike, agree that it deserved more attention than it got. It has an 8 out of 10 on IGN, although their opinion stopped meaning something a long time ago, a 96% on Google users, and some generally favorable reviews on Metacritic. Just don't scroll to the bottom. I was able to find an article written in January of 2021 pertaining to iNinja's commercial success, or the lack thereof, and the potential reason behind its flop. And its proposed theory is the timing of iNinja's release. As the article explains, iNinja was released at about the same time as other huge titles. For example, Mario Kart Double Dash, Tony Hawk's Underground, the original Call of Duty, and a few Star Wars games. So the fact that iNinja came and went in a matter of like three weeks isn't a shock. 
or as the article writes in its concluding paragraph, basically, 2003 was chock full of good games. It's not surprising that the original IP, iNinja, got lost in the fray. But what sucks even more is when you love that game, knowing it is dead and will probably never be resurrected, but still itching for more. You've already played the game many times over, but nothing new is happening, and you can't really rely on the fanbase to do anything big when the fanbase is the opposite of big. Okay, I'm being a bit harsh, the fanbase, although small, is devoted, but still, what do you do? I can't just play the game over and over again, because I would need something new, something I haven't seen before. And the only thing that could offer me that is, like, speedrunning. Wait a minute. I have studied every speedrunning tactic for this game like an absolute maniac. To the point where this game haunts me. When I see a sword, I can't help but have flashbacks. I can't even go to bed and close my eyes without seeing his face. I wanted to see who speedran this game, so I looked it up on speedrun.com. Currently, there are 28 runners and a total of 128 runs over three categories. Those three categories being any percent, 100 percent, and NG plus all levels. If you're not familiar with a speedrunning nomenclature, any percent is simply beating a game as fast as possible. If you're able to skip certain things and levels that aren't technically necessary to beat the game, this is the category that allows you to do just that. They don't care how you beat it, as long as you beat it. On the other hand, 100% is beating the entire game. You're not allowed to skip any levels. In terms of iNinja, there are 22 total levels, but the maximum number of grades in the game is 64. Meaning, aside from the boss levels and a few bonus levels, you have to play every level three times. Which is precisely the reason the slowest time in the any percent category is 3 hours 50 minutes, while the fastest time in the 100% category is 4 hours 39 minutes. And in case you were wondering what the slowest time in the 100% category is, submitted by Chungyoisi on the 3rd of September 2017, 14 and a half hours. And they put a little note next to their submission. This is what peak performance looks like. Can you imagine sitting in your chair, playing this game for 14 and a half hours to get last place? I'm sorry, that's hilarious. Chungi Oisi took a big L on that one. There's also the third category, NG plus all levels. NG meaning new game. For this category, you play on a save slot with all 64 grades and the black belt already achieved, and then you just play every level once. Except for the bonus levels, because you can only play those one time, and then you can never access them again. Which is stupid. For my speedrun, I decided that I'm going to attempt the any percent category. So, simply starting a new game and getting to the end as fast as I can, skipping whatever I want along the way. So naturally, I wanted to see who the man to beat was. And it's Delk, with a 21014. Now, uh, Delk is a peculiar human being. He has a YouTube channel where, among other things, he actually makes iNinja speedrunning tutorials. So yeah, I'm gonna practice this, yeah, we're gonna get here. We skip the ramp. I practice a strat, and I will cover the two most important glitches that you have to know before you do an iNinja speedrun. This will save you multiple minutes over multiple levels. I actually encourage you to learn because it saves easily 45 seconds and I'm going to teach you how to basically avoid all the cycles of the guy basically recharging his attack and whatever. I will be doing like part 1.5 and such to accommodate the newer strats that are found in the run. I hope you have a good night, I hope you learned something new and I hope you stay safe. Oh. He seems like a really nice guy. Do not let this man confuse you. This man is a menace to society. Not only does he have the world record for the any percent category, but he also holds the world record for the 100% category. And the NG plus category. Literally every category. In simplest terms, he's too powerful. He must be stopped. This man was on a serious roll. He set his NG plus record at the end of December of 2021, his any percent record in January of 2022, and then his 100% record in February of 2022. Holy 
shit, dude. I'm about to pass out. You know, somehow I don't doubt that. <sighs> I was watching his any percent world record run, and two hours in, six minutes from the end, he actually dies in the cryo chamber, cause he overestimated how far Ninja could hover. I can't believe what just happened. I can! You see, it's moments like those that are going to be essential for me to beat him. That death cost him about 30 seconds, so if I can just, you know, be good at that level, I've got this thing in the bag. As long as I do one other thing, master every single glitch he has, and then some. In iNinja, there are two major glitches that serve as the foundation for a bunch of other glitches. They are the infinite hover and the chain clip. Let's start with the infinite hover. In iNinja, you're a ninja, which means you have attacks. The most basic attack is your fast attack, initiated by pressing this button on your controller. Also in iNinja are levels, and in those levels there are models. Models make up the environment of any video game, it's everything you see. And those models have collision. This is what stops you from falling through the floor. And the laws of iNinja physics apply not when you're in or out of bounds, but when you're above a model with collision, or as I'm going to call it, an MWC. So if you take away the MWC, physics no longer work the same as they used to. This is revolutionary. What this means is if you can find a way to glitch into a certain part of a level where there is no MWC beneath you and there's just a void, you can do an infinite hover. Remember the basic fast attack? Of course you do, you're like an elephant with your memory. If you press the fast attack button when you walk off a model but you're still above an MWC, you'll just try to do a little hit and then fall. But if you press the fast attack button when you walk off a model and you're no longer above an MWC, you're above the void, you'll hop. Now gravity still affects you, so you'd have to press the button again to hop again, but as long as you keep that button pressing up at a rate of about 300 beats per minute, you'll just hover forever, and then you can go wherever you want and skip massive chunks of the level. But I hear you asking, Geo, how do you get to the void? Well, a few ways, but the most common being chain clipping. In iNinja, there are these chain points that hang from certain areas of the levels, and if you're within a certain distance to these chain points, you can hold your right trigger to attach to them, and then swing back and forth and let go to get across big gaps. Now, chain points are ungodly broken. If you're swinging and you let go, pressing the pause button right when Ninja is at his highest, and then you unpause it, you have successfully completed what's called a pause buffer. Pause buffering exploits a game's pause system, but honestly, I don't even know how it works. All I know is that it does. I believe it has something to do with the in-game collision, where you can make the game's collision system confused by frequently pausing while ramming yourself into geometry that has collision, and the game doesn't know what to do, so it just throws you through the wall. Pause buffering also provides a second advantage. It launches Ninja a little bit higher than you normally would go if you would let go of the chain without pausing. This comes in handy when you need to get over a wall that you can't normally get over or clip straight through. The first mission in the game that uses both the infinite hover and chain clipping is actually the first level in the game, I Ninja. You arrive at this chain point here, attached to it, and then you do a pause buffer to glitch into the wall to your left. From there, you hover into the purple pipes, still out of bounds, readjust your camera, and begin your infinite hover, all the way to the end of the mission. This saves over a minute. Like I said earlier, however, you do have to go back and play certain missions twice or even three times. In the case of iNinja, it's three times, and the second time you play it, it's in the form of a hunt the enemies objective. You have to kill a certain number of enemies for the grade to be activated. For this mission, you can't do that glitch in the beginning of the level because you'll skip a bunch of enemies and getting the grade won't work. So you do have to go through the level like a normal person, but there is still one strat that's used to make it faster. It's here, when you get to the first ramp. You're able to jump off the yellow rail onto the ramp and run down it with more momentum than you would usually have. And if you do it right, you can reach the red arrows and connect to the chain point. From there, you run down the ramp to the next chain point, where you connect to it and begin turning, but you let go right when you run off the ramp. And because you have so much momentum, you can hover all the way to Takayama's eye, saving you around 20 seconds in total. Funnily, when Delk tried doing this for the second I Ninja level, he failed.
Uh, seems that failing that is my religion. The third level of the run is eye to eye, where you get Tekayama's other eyeball. Now this level is special, not because it has a glitch that like skips the entire level, but because it has a glitch that Delk doesn't use that I've mastered. At the start of the level, there's another ramp that you can run down and throw yourself off the side of with enough speed to get to the next section. That's where this big glitch comes in. You run down the next ramp, but you throw yourself off it to the right by the red arrows, letting the red orb capture you. When you respawn, you jump around the left wall, wrapping it as tightly as you can. And if done correctly, the red orb can't catch you. From there, you can begin infinite hovering and hover all the way to where Tekayama's eyeball is. If done within like two tries, this glitch can save 20 to 25 seconds. And like I said, Delk doesn't do it, but I can. This is going to be one of the most important moments in my run, because the entire rest of the run, up until the cryo chamber since, you know, he dies, I will practically be neck and neck with him. So getting even 15 seconds ahead in the beginning can save my run if I screw up an hour and a half later. The next big level for glitches is Rocket Factory. At the start, there's an unskippable fight section that takes a lot of time. But if you go to this box here, run up it, and turn to the right, you can go straight through the wall. From there, you infinite hover for 20 seconds or so, all the way to where the next fight section is. A little later in the mission, you reach a few chain points, and this one here will be used to clip out of bounds. You run along this catwalk to its halfway point, far enough to get that rocket ranks to shoot a rocket at you. Then you turn around and run back to the chain, executing this tight jump to stop the next area of the level from unloading. You attach to the chain, perform a pause buffer, clip through the wall to the left, and hover for 3 seconds before cancelling the hover and readjusting your camera, successfully saving about 35 seconds. Next up is Jungle Falls, the most broken level hub by far. At the start of Ride the Logs, you have to get out of bounds, but there's no chain, so instead, you have to execute the very first enemy clip. It involves pretty much dancing with this ranks to situate him into a good position, cramming yourself in between him and the rock, and jumping into the rock repeatedly until you clip through it. From there, you have to perform the longest infinite hover in the entire run. It takes a carpal tunnel inducing 75 seconds. 75 seconds of non-stop spamming this button. If you manage to maintain your rhythm of 300 beats per minute for 75 seconds straight, the very end of the level will eventually load in, and you'll be able to go around the left side, make a tight jump, and get to the grade. For the second time you play Ride the Logs, you have to collect 10 red coins to activate the grade, so skipping the entire level unfortunately won't work. All you can do is run through the level normally as fast as you can. Towards the end though, you have to fight a ranks captain who's guarding a giant coconut. You have to use that coconut to crash it into some rocks. The problem is that the ranks captain fight is not only unskippable, but also takes a while. And in case it wasn't clear, we don't do a while in this house, so we need to skip it. To do this, you utilize a pause buffer at the previous chain point to launch Ninja over this rock wall, since this wall, for whatever reason, just cannot be clipped through. Then you hover to a bit of grass that's out of bounds and infinite hover around the walls to the coconut. Once you jump on it, you won't have to fight the ranks captain, successfully saving about 30 seconds. And lastly, at the very end of the level, there's an unskippable wave of enemies that you have to kill to deactivate the force field blocking the grade. But this wave of ranks takes like 40 seconds, which is completely unacceptable, so instead, you go to this chain point, do a pause buffer, clip through the rock wall, and hover around the force field to get to the grade. Next is Buzz Off, the second longest level in the game. This also employs an enemy clip right after you walk through the door. Once done, you infinite hover for about 15 seconds to the final area of the level, and then you shoot a rocket at the queen sapsucker that holds the grade inside of it. And with that, you have successfully shortened a roughly 10 minute long level down to just two. And last is Sly Ninja. This usually is an eight to 10 minute long level, but you can complete it in only two. Right when the level begins, you can already see the end of it directly in front of you. If you were to try to infinite hover straight to the end of the level, you wouldn't be high enough to get up there. So what you have to do is start infinite hovering back around to the mission's door. By doing this, it bumps you up a few feet, allowing you to restart your infinite hover, go back around to where the end of the level is, and be high enough to reach the ledge. After that, you have to stand at a cannon and shoot what look like swollen mason jars to make them fall into and jam six smokestacks. 
This section of the level is largely luck based. I mean, you can't actually control when the swollen mason jars stop moving, or when the smokestacks open and close, or even if the swollen mason jars are nicely lined up above the smokestacks when they do stop moving. And that's exactly why this section of the level can be rather frustrating. <laughs> Moving on to Mountain Gorge, Sneak and Destroy has only one glitch in the very beginning, an enemy clip. You line the ranks up next to these crystals and cram Ninja in between the ranks and the wall. Once you clip through, you walk along the edge, jump into the void, and hover until you no longer can. And at that point, you've successfully saved 50 seconds. Next up is Crystal Cavern, which, again, is the longest level, so thank god this one has multiple glitches that save a lot of time. At the start, you hop over this wooden railing and begin an infinite hover. You clip through the rocks and go to the right, and make your way to this rock pillar. Once you jump onto it, you've gained much needed height, kind of like in Sly Ninja, and you can resume your infinite hover, lining up with these two rocks, until you reach the extremely tall ramps. Then you just jump into one of them, and carry on with the mission from there. This first glitch for Crystal Cavern has the potential to put me ahead of Delk, because he actually dies when doing it. Oh, I lost the hover. That's a shame. Once you get to the point where you've shot your explosive dart at the first of three arms holding the crystal, you run off the elevator and hover next to the second arm. This triggers that arm's elevator to also come down, allowing you to ride it back up and shoot that arm too. Essentially, you're only completing a third of the actual level and the third that you do complete is significantly shortened by the glitch you do at the start. After destroying the second arm, you can either do the same thing and hover to the third arm, ride that elevator back up and shoot it, or to be 15 seconds faster, you can stay where you are, make a very tight shot, and trick the game into thinking that you hit the third arm from the second arm's location. Either way, these tactics collectively save well over 10 minutes. And finally, Malachi, Mountain Gorge's boss. This level doesn't have a glitch, but during the hand-to-hand -hand combat part, you're able to back Malachi into a corner and either do back slashes or downward slashes until he dies. And for some reason, he can't block them or get away. So you have effectively stunlocked him. Altogether, this saves you about two minutes. Moving to Moonbase, there are two levels, Outpost Alpha and Outpost Beta. Outpost Alpha is the easier one of the two, which basically only has a chain clip at the beginning, followed by an infinite hover that saves you about a minute. Outpost Beta, on the other hand, is a lot harder. The main glitch is done here, where the chain point is. You have to swing back, let go, connect to the chain two more times, do two or three pause buffers, climb up the wall and to the left, clip behind the pipe, hover to a tiny ledge out of bounds, and then infinite hover for 20 seconds. Out of every glitch in the run, this one is the most difficult to perform correctly, because of how much precise input it requires in such a short amount of time. And Delk gets it on his first try, because, of course. Nice. The last major glitch in the run is at the space station, in the level The Imperial Guard, which is the last level you play right before Odor. This level is the fastest one in the entire speedrun. It normally takes around 4.5 minutes, but you can finish it in just 30 seconds by pause buffering at this chain point and getting on top of the rail. After a few hours of practice, I was getting almost every glitch down. Of course, it's a whole other story to successfully do all of them consecutively in an actual run with all of the pressure, but I was getting the hang of them. There were only two that I still had a really hard time with, Malachi and Outpost Beta, with Outpost Beta definitely being the hardest. I was only able to get it like once out of every 35 attempts or so, and it really doesn't help that you're supposed to perform this glitch two hours into the run, meaning if you fail, you're done. It's not like you're only five minutes in and can easily reset and try again, oh no. If you're gonna go for it, you better be sure you can pull it off. Despite knowing that I wasn't perfect with all the glitches yet, I was feeling really confident in my abilities with every other glitch. So, I brushed up on my skills one final time and decided to attempt my very first speedrun. We're gonna begin in three, two, one, go. Okay, I don't want to make you sit through the entire speedrun, so I'll just give you the clip notes of what happened. 
iNinja was perfect. I got the chain clip and infinite hover on my first try, and finished the mission only two and a half seconds behind Delk's world record. From there though? Uh, let's see. What word describes it best? Um, abysmal? The second level of the run, Heart Attack, where you get Tekayama's heart, was embarrassing to say the least. I tried and failed to do a stupid trick in the beginning, completely unnecessarily, and then, during a later combat section, I died. I died? I didn't even realize I was so low on health. I didn't factor that into any equation. Guess I have to consider that now. Because look how little health I have. I'm a white belt. I get flicked and my neck breaks. The eye-to-eye -eye glitch execution was on my second try, so very good altogether. And, as for the hunt the enemy's eye ninja level with the ramp skip, I don't subscribe to that religion, Delk. Partially. I partially subscribe to that religion, Delk. I wasn't able to do the eye-to-eye -eye glitch the second time I played it, since I had to collect red coins and I would have skipped them. But for the third eye-to-eye -eye level, I just had to beat a clock. So I did do the glitch. The problem was, I failed multiple times. Please. Oh my god. The next level was the third eye ninja, also a beat the clock objective. For this one, I failed the first time I tried doing my infinite hover, but I got it on my second try, continued going, and everything was perfect in the world. What's happening? What's happening? What? I don't know what that was. I have never had that happen to me before, nor have I ever seen it happen to someone else. And I don't even know what caused it. Was it my fault somehow? Or did I just get really unlucky with how the next part of the level loaded? I seriously have no clue. But whatever the reason, this amazing moment cost me over a minute. The first Rocket Factory glitch was great, but the chain clip wasn't. Okay, first part's done, now the hard part. I swear, I swear, I swear. This happens to me when I was practicing. Oh my god, that is so annoying. Ventus was great, apart from when I accidentally selected the 30 second long training program instead of skipping it. No, 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 I... Shush. Yeah, I know. Oh my god. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. The execution of all three Chase the Fuse levels was perfect, but the third grade in a cage level wasn't. I missed a lot. Because you're only at one by the time you come in. <laughs> Simon's execution was good all around, and so was Ride the Logs. My wrist actually did a good job not breaking. The second Ride the Logs level, where I have to find the 10 red coins, went okay. The coconut chain clip was excellently performed, until it wasn't. That was amazing. That was amazing. I've never done it that fast. No, 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 no. But I did get it on my second try, still in a fast time. The ending with the chain clip, though, was utterly terrible. I simply could not get it and spent an extra two minutes trying. Thank you. And do I not have enough coins? And this is where my run completely went down the toilet. You see, there's one detail about this game I haven't explained. In the game, there are eight bonus missions. You've heard me mention them previously like two times, and you have to buy them with the coinage you collect throughout the game. So in terms of a speed run, while you do want to be as fast as possible, you are required to slow down at certain parts to collect coins, since the bonus missions are insanely quick and too good to pass up. You don't buy all eight though, only the first five, and the fifth one costs 400 coins. Basically, I was over 100 coins short, and I couldn't just skip that level and come back to it once I had enough coinage because the next level, Ride the Logs 3, required a red belt, and the last grade I needed to get it was the fifth bonus mission. So, to put it bluntly, I was screwed, and I was already behind by over 11 minutes at this point, so I just called it quits. Well, I hate to say it, but I think I'm done with this run. <laughs> I'm so done. What puzzled me, though, was where those 100 missing coins were. Because I was over 100 behind. It's not like, oh, I just missed a few coins here and there that I should have gotten. No, that's a lot. 
what went wrong? Where did I mess up something? I don't even know. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Well, I did. As it turns out, the reason I didn't have enough coinage was the eye to eye levels. By doing the glitch, I skip this ramp, but this ramp gives you 20 coins. Plus, the room that I skip gives you about 15. So multiply 35 missed coins per eye to eye level times two, since I do the glitch two out of the three times I play it, and that is 70 missed coins. The other ones came from simply not collecting coins that I easily could have. So I had a problem. I needed those coins, but to get them, I wouldn't be able to do the eye to eye glitch, and I wouldn't have the chance to get 20 seconds ahead. But I did discover a workaround. In grade in a cage, you move a lot faster on the explosive barrel than when you're running normally. And breaking things with that barrel is also a lot faster than breaking them normally. So what I decided I would do is continue doing one of the glitches in eye to eye, playing the other two without the glitch. And then in grade in a cage, I would take an extra few seconds to break some barrels around me and collect the coins inside. Doing this, I'd be able to do the glitch in eye to eye and have enough coinage to buy the fifth bonus mission and go. This run was also filled with mess up after mess up, so I'll cut to the main point. I still did not have enough coinage. I was six coins short, because during the second and third grade in the cage missions, I felt like I had enough, and so I decided to stop collecting the extra I should have continued collecting. Regarding the run itself though, it was better than the first, but I still suffered that glitch in the third eye ninja level. Am I cursed? Please. Thankfully, I know what causes it. If you go too far to the left during your infinite hover, when you try to roll the ball into the next section of the level, it'll happen. So all you have to do is stay further to the right during your infinite hover. And the second ride the logs level was utter garbage. I failed so many times at the coconut skip, and I could not do the ending chain clip to save my life. No, 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 no. So after realizing that I didn't have the coinage to keep going, I quit the run and tried again two days later. Begin. Good, come on, come on please. Good. Okay. Okay, so. We are not going to be that far behind him. Holy crap. 9.7 seconds behind. We were 30 seconds behind, now we're 9 seconds behind. This is good. 3.7. Nice. That was really stupid, that was really stupid. Oh. Please leave me alone, Rocket. Rocket. Yes, one, two, three, let go. Dang it, every, uh, it's fine, I'm happy. Couldn't be happier. Oh, I'm uh, even slower. Why am I so slow? I just get slower and slower and slower. You gotta be kidding me. Oh my god. Three minutes behind. This is, uh. My stupid mistake that should not have happened. And I'm already two minutes behind the chain challenge. Yeah, we've got to that point now. The depressing point. 19 seconds slower. He would have already finished Ride the Logs 22 seconds ago. Wow. There. And just don't mess this hover up, please. No. God, lost three minutes there. And I now I have enough coins. Yay. Eight minutes. Jesus Christ. Yep. 
Ninja. Holy crap. Okay, Crystal Cavern. Um, I'm gonna be able to make up... Actually, no, no, I'm not. What am I talking about? I'm already so far behind. Even if I don't die like Delk did, I'm not making up garbage, man. Okay, come on, let's get this. Yes. Nice. You've got to be kidding me. I was right there. I get really far. I touch the ramp. And I clip straight through the bottom. And then I die there too, just like Doug. This is wonderful. This is amazing. Doing so great. I hate that ledge. Oh my god, I hate that ledge. What is wrong with it? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. I'm... Mm. Screw this game. <laughs> oh, screw you. I don't... Mm. Oh my god. Mm. I don't understand. I swear to God, if I die again... Thank you! I don't think I got a, uh... Thing. No, of course I freaking didn't. I died so much here. Like that. Screw you. Why is it so hard? I don't get it. Oh my god. Oh my god. I know I said I was going to end this after Crystal Cavern, but... Actually, no, you know what? Nah, I am. Screw this whole thing. I'm done. 2.4 seconds. Okay, so that is the fastest I've ever been by doing it. Okay, just please get the second part. Please. Oh, please, come on. I can do this. <gasps> yes, 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 yes. Okay, well, I saved 16 seconds. Okay, good. Just let's get the infinite hover. Come on. Every time. Oh, my God. Holy crap, I saved 54 seconds on that. Wow. Gotta be kidding me.
Thank you. Nice. That was amazing. That was really good. Wow. Ooh, am I gonna get to save some time? I'm seven seconds away. Three, two, one. Yep, I saved a second, 0.7. Let's go one more. Come on, one more, one more, one more. Don't mess me up. Okay, good, 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 good. All right. Now here it is, folks. The moment we've all been waiting for. Hell yeah. Oh my god. Hell yeah. Oh. Oh my god. No, 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 no. You gotta be kidding me. Alright. Yeah, that was awful. One, two. Nice. Almost messed that up. That's good. Okay. That was awesome. That was amazing. Oh my god. Two twenty nine, twenty four, twenty three. I don't know. Uh, third place is two twenty one. Fourth place is two twenty seven. Fifth place is two thirty fourteen. With my 229.24, that would put me in 5th place. I have the 5th fastest run. Okay. That was a very strong first level. I'm 2.3 seconds ahead. Holy crap. Okay, and let's, come on, let's do this. Yes, come on. Come on. Yeah. Oh, we're going to be ahead here. Ten and a half seconds ahead. I am ten and a half seconds ahead of him. First half down. Come on. Second half. Come on, let's do this. Oh, I screwed that garbage up. I'm 25 seconds ahead. 5.8 seconds behind. Oh, you gotta be- you gotta be kidding me. That stupid camera. Let's see how bad this is. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, that was so good. That was such good RNG. I get really lucky on this level with good RNG, and I save 50 seconds. Wow. I hate this level so much. I cannot explain how much I hate this level. I was right there! I was right at the ledge! I don't get it. I'm literally right there. My feet touch the ledge. Camera, if you don't cooperate, I'm gonna break my control. Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, camera got stuck. What an embarrassment. Okay. Okay, I should be good here. Yeah. Okay. Let's try to do this. Oh my god. Yes. Almost. Screwed that up. 
Okay. Destroy this one fully. Come on. Destroy this one. Come on, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. Come on. Jesus Christ. Let's see. Yep, there it is. Come on. Come on. One more, one more, one more. Come on. Sub 224. Yes. Sub 224. Oh, come on. Come on, please. Should not have done that, but that's fine. Second place. I got second place. By seven seconds. I will take that. Nice. Nice. Jump up here. Okay. Come on. Let's get this first try. Come on. Nice. I've got 30 seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. No. No. Now I've got 30 seconds. Wow. Oh my goodness. Why? Why? Oh, you little piece of garbage. Oh my god, I absolutely hate you. I'm a minute behind. Why does this happen to me? Why? I'm a minute. I went from being 40 seconds ahead to a minute behind. Come on. Come on, please. Oh, come on. Okay, that was good. But I'm over three and a half minutes behind. Oh my god. Good. Good. Okay, that's very good. Okay, come on, please. Come on, yes. Yes. Okay, let's get the trick shot, come on. Got 30 seconds, 40 seconds actually. That was awesome. That was awesome. All right, let's see. Oh, come on. Come on. There we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Okay, come on, I'm so close, 20 seconds. Come on, come on, I'm so close, 10 seconds, come on. Oh, come on, please. I did it, 215. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, I can, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Come on. Two thirteen forty-eight. Oh, thanks, Odor. You are a piece of crap, you know that. I don't know what I'm doing. Come on, Odor, please stop. Okay, I want to finish before 2.12.15 so I can get over a minute improved. I've got 13 seconds, come on. At this point, I was less than two minutes away from Delk's world record of 2.10.14.
and just 10 days after I got the time of 2.12.08, I completed my 11th speedrun. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, you, you just stay there. Just stay there. You pieces of crap. Just stay there. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, on the way up, I cannot die. I swear to God, if I die, I'm going to defenestrate myself. Woo! I saved 47 seconds. I'm 51 seconds ahead. <clears throat> I'm 51 seconds ahead. 47 seconds ahead. Great. Not great, but fine. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. I'm going on to the last level. Emperor Odor himself. 46.8 seconds. Again, come on, Odor. I've got 40 seconds. No, I don't. I've got whatever. I don't even... I can't do math. I messed up again, and every time I mess up, he does it. I swear to God, I've got 30 seconds. Odor, you piece of crap. Thank you. No, not again, not again, not again. I've got 20 seconds, I've got 20 seconds. Please, please, please. Please, come on, I've got 14 seconds. Please, one more hit, one more hit, one more hit, one more hit. No, I've got, no. No, 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 no. I beat it, I beat it, I beat it. I freaking beat it. Oh my God, I beat it. I beat it. I just got the world record. Oh my God. Oh my God.
Oh my god. I just got the world record by one and a half seconds. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just beat it by one and a half seconds. That's nothing, but I beat it. I just got the world record. I can't believe I just did it. By only one and a half seconds. <sighs> oh my god. It was just earlier today that I was doing attempts. And I was doing so good. I went into grade in a cage with 52 seconds, just like today, just like this one. And I ruined it on grade in a cage one. Completely ruined it, lost everything. I was so angry. I was so upset. And would you look at that? Just three hours later, three hours later, I went from being unbelievably angry to getting the world record. Wow. I was so frustrated. And look at where I am now, just three hours later. You know, I'm not one for inspirational speaking, but that's proof right there that anything can get better. It always can get better. One and a half seconds may not be a lot. And Delk, he may beat it in a week. But I can say that I've held the world record before. This has been one crazy journey. It all started with just a goal, you know, that I would, I would get it. <clears throat> I made the entire video around it. I edited the first... 49 minutes, 46 minutes of the video without ever having attempted a run. I was just hoping that I'd be able to pull it off. Uh, I kind of put all my eggs in one basket, but it paid off. It always can get better. iNinja is one of those games from my childhood that means a lot to me. And speedrunning it was kind of my way of writing a love letter to it. It may have taken me over 140 attempts and 11 full two hour long speedruns to get the world record, along with a lot of frustration, a lot of failure, frequent bouts of zero improvement, and just a lot of anger and not being able to get certain things that I could easily get yesterday. But all of it was worth it. But how? How can someone put themselves through that and still think it was worth it? Why does anyone speedrun? What's the point? If you succeed, all you get to do is put your name at the top of an intangible leaderboard and stay there for a month. Maybe, if you're lucky, a leaderboard that ultimately doesn't even mean anything. To someone who has never dabbled in speedrunning or given it a second thought beyond just enjoying watching the cool tricks, it can seem foolish, almost like a complete waste of time. Sitting there for days, weeks, months, practicing the same movements again and again, but hoping for a different outcome. Some would call that insanity. And this is only heightened when the game being speedrun is a game no one knows about. Sure, for an extremely popular game like Minecraft, it's understandable why someone would want to speedrun that. It's a huge bragging right, everyone knows what it is. But for a game that no one knows, a game that is getting old in terms of video game history, a game that sits in most people's houses if they even own it, 
forgotten in a heaping cardboard box in the dark, dusty corner of some closet. It can be very hard to understand why anyone would want to speedrun that, of all things. So why did I? Well, I'll be honest. I was having a very hard time figuring out why, or at least transferring those feelings onto paper. I mean, deep down, I had to know why I was able to justify making this video in the first place after all. I just had terrible writer's block trying to wrap this video up. I didn't know how to end something so big, something with so many twists and turns and chapters and happy moments and funny moments and angry moments and sad moments. I couldn't find that bright red fabric to tie the ribbon on top of the present so I could finally throw that crap under the tree. But about two weeks ago, at roughly two in the morning, I went to the bathroom. But instead of going back to my room to go back to sleep, I went to a window and looked down at my neighborhood's street. And I was talking to myself about this conclusion, trying to come up with what I could say. And what I said to myself in front of that window is, I think, the best way I could have put these feelings into words. iNinja represents the larger collection of video games from our childhoods, one that isn't tethered to a specific era, time, or generation. So I think when we were kids, it was really easy to make a random video game or obsession for months on end. We'd play it once, then twice, then thrice. Then our favorite missions over and over again. We'd never really feel bored, even for a second. No matter your age, there is probably some video game out there that comes to your mind when you picture your childhood. And while playing these games normally, the way they were intended to be enjoyed, gets stale after a while, Speedrunning offers a genuinely brand new medium to enjoy the exact same games. And just when the established glitches start to get boring, new glitches are discovered that completely negate the first ones. And this cycle rarely ever ends, which almost always keeps speedrunning in a constant state of being fresh, regardless of how old the game being speedrun is. You're bound to find insane, game-breaking glitches you once thought were impossible, so many interesting movement exploits, combat glitches that make the enemies look like a two-year-old. It all changes your way, your way of playing and experience in the game, which leads to a big twist also in entertainment and difficulty. And we didn't notice at the time, but we were already doing what the kind of thing speedrunners do. Check every corner of a level, ingrain it into our brains, and being able to perform it with our eyes closed. I feel you're relieving the moments of your childhood, where you were dissected the game kind of like in biology class, only with a much, much greater sense of what your final goal is, and actually direct competition to compare. In short, speedrunning helps ensure the player doesn't lose love for the game. Which is critical. Because oftentimes, like in the case of iNinja, the games being speedrun carry incredible amounts of sentimental value, so many memories attached to them. They are relics to some of us, reminders of the past. I personally never beat the game 100% and I needed my brother's help to beat two of the bosses being Simon and Malachi. And as we grow up, uh, our inner child slowly fades away. We struggle to find something that makes us as consistently happy as gaming did when we were kids, even if we still game nowadays. So I think it's very normal for anyone to try to find like that game in their childhood that made them feel so full of life. Years ago, decades ago for some, these games made us jump out of bed in the morning. We were stoked to play them, but then we got older. And now as teenagers and or adults, it can be very, very hard to find any reason to jump out of bed in the morning. These games made us want to. We would eagerly get out of bed, run to the TV, turn it on, throw the game into the console, and play for hours, just the same as we did yesterday, the day before yesterday, the day before the day before yesterday, 
and just the same as we were going to do tomorrow. And at night, we would be excited for the next day because we knew we were going to do it all again. In fact, I remember times in my own childhood where I'd be too excited for the following day that I wouldn't be able to fall asleep. That pure excitement is not so easy to come by now. I'm sure you can attest. These games give us a window to look through. Maybe at two in the morning, maybe when you've just come back from the bathroom, maybe when you should have gone back to sleep. But speedrunning can open the blinds. It is a rare moment in adulthood where you're mentally back in middle school, only this time you're the big brother helping the clueless but very happy kid beat their favorite game. And for that, I'm grateful to have taken part. Thanks for taking part with me. Thanks for watching.